Hora hier Hello everyone, how have you been? I hope I find you in good health. I'm Ari Thurger and today I'm going to talk about animism and magic. The importance of understanding the basics of animism and interiorize such concepts until we change our world views and reshape them into one that is able to perceive nature, the world and the cosmos as living spiritual entities. With an animistic worldview, we can better grasp the full power of magic and what it actually is, so we can rightly conduct all our efforts to achieve our purposes when we do magical work. What I mean with this is that the practice of magic alone will never work unless you believe in what you are doing. And believing isn't repeating the words over and over again until you are familiar with them and it becomes normal and you accept it. Belief is not acceptance. Belief is knowing without a single trace of doubt. So allow me a few minutes <laughs> to explain myself and beforehand thank you for your time and I do hope you enjoy this video. So what exactly is magic? <laughs> we could certainly write extensive books about the subject and express all sorts of ideas. But one thing is certain, at least to me, magic doesn't belong in religion. It just doesn't work when our perception of the spiritual is nothing more than a construction with limits that doesn't allow the mind to fully expand into the spiritual. In other words, spirituality doesn't come from religion. First, we must stop confusing religion with spirituality. Religion is a set of rules, dogmas, regulations and rituals created by human beings. All these ideas were supposed to help people to achieve the spiritual. Guidelines to lead our minds towards spirituality. However, due to the natural human imperfections, religion has become corrupted. It was turned into a political tool, highly divisive and of course used as a device to aggrandize personal power. Religion cares little about the spiritual and the spiritual becomes a mere word, an illusion evoked not to lead people into freedom but to maintain them loyal to notions of holiness that are no more than sweet fantasies and yet we remain in doubt and confusion, feeling lonely and afraid. Spirituality, however, is not theology or ideology. Spirituality is simply a way of life, a natural, pure, original. Spirituality isn't given to us, it is already there. It has always been because we are surrounded by it. We live in it, we are it. Everything is connected in the spiritual web and the spiritual manifests itself in everything. Spirituality is a network linking us to the living spiritual entities of the cosmos, to what we call the divine. Spirituality is a network linking us with nature, the world and the universe and with each other. And this is when magic comes in. Magic is the result of our interaction with the spiritual through ritual. But ritual more often than not is perceived as the belief that we humans can control natural forces through that same ritual and take those forces, those powers and use them to our advantage. Yes and no. If we believe we can control such forces, we won't get anywhere. There must be a symbiotic relationship with the spiritual. 
with the natural forces, the spiritual forces that surround us. If we give, we receive, and if we receive, we must also give. If we take, it will be taken away from us. So magic is this, a symbiotic relationship with the spiritual. And ritual is a means of expressing our involvement in the powers of the universe, as a means of gaining contact with those powers. And of causing them, of course, to manifest themselves to us. And this symbiotic relationship can only be understood if we have an animistic world view. I have already done a video about animism where I have expressed a few basic notions and to avoid repeating myself, in a few words we can say that animism is the belief that spirits inhabit all sorts of material and immaterial things one way or another project themselves into reality and we can come in contact with. Such spirits can inhabit and manifest themselves in objects, locations, phenomena and living entities. Animism is the belief that spiritual forces animate everything in the universe because everything is part of the same spiritual network, be that animate or inanimate and such spiritual forces will manifest themselves through the material and immaterial. We live on an era highly industrialized, absolutely materialistic. It's somewhat easy to obtain an object and quickly throw it away. <laughs> we look at it and we clearly have the notion that it is disposable when we have no further need of it. A discardable reality. Our mindset is predisposed to accept and understand reality according to what becomes normal in the societies we live in. So everything within the panorama of religion and philosophy ends up adopting social phenomenon of the reality of our societies. If a society is highly industrialized, materialistic, the mind will transport that to the religious to the philosophical and even to the spiritual. It's a natural impulse, or perhaps a lack of imagination, to assume the otherworldly reality is the projection of this one, because we transport what we are familiar with to everything else. So, materialism is transported to the spiritual, and the materialistic mind understands that matter is the fundamental substance in nature be that in this world or out of this world. And that all phenomenon, even the mental phenomenon, is the result of interactions between the material, between the matter. And that matter itself projects phenomenon, which influences other matter. And everything ends up being solely an endless interaction between matter with action and reaction. And this pushes the mind to accept and believe that everything that exists is physical and can only be physical. So this goes absolutely against an animistic worldview in which it is believed that everything is spiritual and can manifest itself in the material and in the immaterial. So an idea that everything that exists is physical fits into the modern mind of the industrialized world, into a mind detached from the natural reality. But if we turn to nature, we understand that reality isn't just physical, because the wind exists, for instance, but it is formless and cannot be seen. But we know it's there. There is a wonderful variety of unseen phenomenon without any physical manifestation, yet we know it's there. But we accept the wind solely because we have the physical proof of its manifestation when we feel it or when it brings down a tree or makes waves on the water or blows too hard and we can even hear it. We only accept the unseen when it has clear manifestations on the physical. Which is why the materialistic mind has a hard time accepting the spiritual, the unseen, all that exists but has no need to manifest itself in the physical, because the physical isn't its reality. Not everything that exists must exist in the physical. So, 
when it comes to magic, the work of magic, we also transport it to the physical and the attitude of need overwhelms us. The materialistic mind believes in what it can touch, see, taste, hear and smell. And so we transport that mindset into the magical work and we have the need to use matter in order to harness the natural powers of the world, which we expect to manifest themselves on the tools we use and ultimately on us. Materialism imposes limitations on the mind and a wondrous variety of possibilities will never be explored. As said before, magic belongs to the spiritual and the spiritual can only be fully understood with an animistic worldview by understanding and knowing that there is existence beyond the physical. Only then will magic truly work. Because if everything we come across contains a spirit, a conscious, it is sentient and therefore exists, then it has potential and we can interact with it. But only if we understand that there isn't a separation between the physical and the spiritual. Because the physical reality is already part of the spiritual, simply because everything that exists is the spiritual network that links everything. The physical is no more than the material manifestation of the spiritual, which means we can interact, communicate and work with the spiritual if we are able to understand that the spiritual is everything that exists. Just because you cannot see it or immediately interact with it through your physical abilities, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It only means that it is a question of limited perceptual abilities. I believe that it is essential to have this perception that we belong and are very much part of a vast living universe of spiritual beings and we ourselves are included in that universe. An animal, a rock, a tree, a human being, the sky, wind, fire, rain is spiritual and we must not forget all the other spiritual beings that have no need to manifest themselves into something physical but can interact with the physical nonetheless. When the mind is opened to accept the existence of a limitless spiritual universe. Our magical workings will have a real manifestation if we understand that the forces we want to work with are all around us. And that's the main point here. You cannot make demands and forcibly want to harness some natural power for your own purposes because nothing belongs to anything. If the spirits are real, if they have a conscious, are sentient and therefore exist, they belong to nothing but to themselves alone. And you are interacting not with a submissive entity that willingly gives itself to you, but you are interacting with something that has a mind of its own, a purpose and a life of its own. So you cannot demand you have to ask, and not just ask, you must have a symbiotic relationship with it. You cannot expect to ask for something without giving anything in return, and vice versa, of course. You cannot demand a tree to grow if you do not give it nourishment. So, in magic work, it shouldn't be a monologue. It should be a conversation, interaction with what surrounds you. To be there, going into the place, interact with it, living with it. As said before, magic is the result of our interaction with the spiritual through ritual. But it is important to understand that ritual in here is a means of expressing our involvement in and with the powers of the universe, as a means of gaining contact with those powers and of causing them to manifest themselves to us and we manifest ourselves to them. This is not to be confused with ritual within religion, because that sort of ritual is a requirement to obtain the propitiation of 
divine powers who might or may not intervene on behalf of the human suppliants. And that sort of ritual, the ritual in religion, is placing yourself on the level of subjugation. Or rather, you express yourself as a follower and therefore you, you, are on, you place yourself, yourself on an inferior level to that of the gods. This is not a symbiotic and healthy relationship with the divine. Don't get me wrong, the notion of the divine exists within animism because the divine is also spiritual. But in the interaction is more real. There is an exchange and um, relation almost as friendship without being an abusive relationship. You do not ask, you do not demand, you do not wait. In animism, the interaction with the divine is strictly from the point of view of the spiritual. And so you go there. You go to the place where the spiritual inhabits or manifests itself and you interact, you give yourself, you let yourself be known. You give gifts, you sing songs, you dance and eat and laugh or cry or scream, but you let yourself be known and constantly interact with the spiritual. That's how magic works with a symbiotic relationship with the spiritual. A person who has an animistic mind knows that he or she lives in a world absolutely filled and infused with spirits. That person knows that everything around the individual is alive and has a conscious and life of its own. Each spirit has its own nature and some choose to live and coexist with each other or with other spirits. With you, for instance, you are also a spirit manifested in matter. That's how you as a spirit manifest yourself through that body. All spirits that choose to live with you and with each other have the sense of working together towards common goals or use each other to achieve something. And in the middle of all of this, if you are not aware of the spiritual world that surrounds you, then you are not actively contributing to something. <laughs> if you are not aware of this spiritual interaction, uh, around you, you are the spirit that is left behind or put aside because you refuse to acknowledge the spiritual reality you live in. Think of it as watering a tree. It will grow and give you shade and become a house for many other creatures. If you constantly leave water for bees as well, they will continuously to come there for water and pollinize the tree and your garden and everything else in the area because they know it's safe to work in there because they have a source of water nearby. The tree will bear excellent fruits if that, it's, if that is its nature because of the water you gave to it and because of the bees. You do not take all the fruits and let some fall into the earth and rot and it will nourish the ground providing more nutrients for other trees, other flowers and creatures of the ground, which will feed upon the rotting material, will, will grow and serve as food for other animals around. You see, there's a cycle and you can be part of it and have an outstanding healthy and positive influence in it, or a very destructive influence if you refuse to acknowledge and respect it. The same thing happens if you acknowledge or not the spiritual world you live in. This is the spiritual world. Everything is spiritual. Understand that you are a spiritual being living as a human being and living among other spirit beings. And just as the world you can immediately come in contact with as a physical being, it is filled with living entities. And the spiritual world is the exact same thing, also filled with spiritual entities interacting with each other, living, doing their things <laughs> uh, and do with their own purposes. So, as said before, this is a question of limited perceptual abilities and only by admitting that, knowing that, can you possibly make your magic work. Just think about it for a while. You may not be aware of certain spiritual entities, but they might be aware of you because they may not have the same limited perception you have or have certainly different perceptual abilities than you. 
Before any work of magic, you have to work on your perception of the world and of the unseen. People often jump to magic and completely neglect other fundamental aspects of the magical, or rather, of the spiritual. First, you need to change your worldview and accept your own perceptual abilities, knowing your perceptual limitations. One of the things you can do is to understand that in our modern days, magic is often placed as a subcategory within religion. When you link magic or sorcery to a specific religion, with specific idols, specific rules and laws, and a clear structure composed by preconceived ideas of reality, you are limiting yourself and the magic in you. If magic belongs to the spiritual, it is already in you, without the need of external ideas that give limitations to the spiritual itself. Magic is rooted in you. It is part of you because you are a spiritual being. And magic is just a term given to the interaction between spiritual beings. When you detach the spiritual from the religious, it is of my belief that you are on the right path to set yourself free, spiritually at least. Once you do that, you can reshape your mind and construct an animistic worldview and ultimately you can work on the symbiotic relationship with the spiritual. That is, a mutual beneficial relationship between you and other spiritual species. Don't think that these spiritual entities are part of your world. Think that you are part of the same universe they live in. The spiritual reality is a spiritual ecosystem. Since you are part of it, you will have influence upon it. And every other spirit will have influence upon you. Accept that, or at least know that. This is magic, the interaction with the spiritual for mutual benefit. Crea create a healthy spiritual ecosystem by expressing yourself to the spiritual, by showing your intention through singing, speech, invocation, offerings, ritual, talismans, and so on and so forth. The aim is to fully interact and create a symbiotic relationship whose very nature supports you and you support it. You are neither above nor below the spiritual entities surrounding you. You stand at the very center, like all others that have their own center, and each individual spiritual entity is linked by a spiritual web that composes an endless spiritual ecosystem with, within the limitless spiritual universe, and everything is part of it. Right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video and as always, back for the love.